a massive Manhattan-sized object hurtling into our solar system from deep space. Officially, it's just the third interstellar visitor ever recorded, but its nearly perfect alignment with the planetary plane is triggering alarms among planetary defense experts. Harvard's RV Loeb claims this isn't just another cosmic pebble. He warns the final time for action is here before a potential disaster creeps in unseen. So what is 3i slash Atlas really doing here, and why are some scientists worried enough to press governments into vigilance right now? The alert first pinged in the early hours of July 1, 2025. Deep in Chile's Rio Hurtado Valley, the Atlas Survey Telescope picked up a moving dot that wasn't in any catalog. The system flagged it as fast, bright, and, most unusually, traveling along the same flat plane as the planets. Within minutes, the Atlas team shifted into overdrive. Slack channels and WhatsApp threads lit up as astronomers scrambled to confirm the find. Archival images from mid-June were pulled, cross-checked, and measured against the new data. The numbers didn't add up to any known comet or asteroid. The object's speed and trajectory pointed to a visitor from beyond the sun's grasp, a true interstellar interloper. Word spread quickly through the global watch lists. The Minor Planet Center received the alert before sunrise. By noon, observatories from Hawaii to South Africa had joined the verification effort. Early calculations suggested a body up to 10 kilometers wide, about the size of Manhattan, making it not only the third interstellar object ever spotted, but by far the largest. For context, 1 I slash Oumuamua in 2017 was barely a few hundred meters across, and 2 I slash Borisov a little over a kilometer. This new object, tentatively labeled 3 I slash Atlas, was in a league of its own. Media outlets seized on the discovery almost instantly. Headlines called it a cosmic skyscraper, a rogue city barreling through the solar system. The phrase, Manhattan-sized, echoed across newsrooms and social media feeds. Astronomers fielded a barrage of questions. Was it dangerous? Was it natural? Why was it moving so precisely along the planetary plane? The Atlas team, still running on adrenaline, cautioned that more data was needed, but even veteran scientists admitted they had never seen anything quite like this. Within 24 hours, 3i slash Atlas had gone from an anonymous speck in a Chilean sky to the focus of global scrutiny. The world's telescopes locked on, hungry for answers. In the background, planetary defense networks quietly raised their alert levels. For the first time since the days of Oumuamua, the boundaries of the solar system felt suddenly, unnervingly porous. Orbital analysts pored over the early data, searching for a pattern that might explain the newcomer's path. The numbers stood out immediately. 3i slash Atlas was moving on a hyperbolic course, with an orbital eccentricity measured at 6.1, far above the threshold for any object bound to the Sun. Its incoming speed, about 58 kilometers per second relative to the Sun, left no doubt about its interstellar origin. But what drew the most attention was its approach angle. Unlike the previous interstellar visitors, which swept in from steep, off-kilter paths, 3y in slash Atlas was gliding through the solar system at just 5 degrees above the ecliptic, the same flat plane where the planets orbit. This alignment is not what astronomers expect from random interstellar debris. Under basic models, an object ejected from another star system should arrive from any direction, with only a tiny chance, well under 1%, of matching the solar system's disk so closely. Some simulation work suggests that, after accounting for how surveys like Atlas and Pan-STARRS focus their searches near the ecliptic, the odds of finding such a well-aligned object rise to a few percent. Still, the rarity stands out, especially when compared to 1i slash Oumuamua's 33-degree tilt and 2i slash Borisov's 44-degree angle. Only 3i slash Atlas traces a path so nearly parallel to the planetary orbits, albeit in retrograde, moving opposite the planet's direction. These figures, eccentricity 6.1, hyperbolic excess velocity near 58 kilometers per second, and a five degree inclination became the focus of intense debate. Was this a statistical fluke, a product of how telescopes scan the sky or something more deliberate? The question was left open, 
but the alignment gave scientists a concrete, objective metric to puzzle over. It provided a baseline for all further investigations into whether 3 Atlas is simply an oddball comet or a sign of something stranger passing through the solar system. Spectrographs at the European Southern Observatory and Keck began gathering light from 3 on Atlas just days after its discovery. Instead of the classic cometary signature, a bright tail streaming away from the sun, astronomers noticed something ODD. The brightest part of the coma glowed forward toward the sun, a pattern that defied standard models of how ice and dust vaporize in sunlight. This forward-facing glow became a puzzle in itself, but the real surprise came from the chemical fingerprints hidden in the light. Teams using the VLT's X-Shooter and UVES instruments homed in on specific wavelengths, searching for familiar elements. Nickel lines stood out sharply, with emission levels more than three times above the background noise, while iron, usually abundant in comet dust, remained undetectable. The nickel-to-iron ratio was far higher than anything normally seen in solar system comets, echoing some of the strangest readings ever recorded, but on a much larger scale. Laboratory models suggest that at the distances where these observations were made, only certain nickel compounds, like volatile carbonyls or organometallic complexes, could release nickel atoms so efficiently at such low temperatures. Traditional mineral grains, the kind that make up most comet nuclei, simply don't let go of their metals this easily. The data pointed to a mechanism that doesn't fit the standard playbook, raising questions about the parent material and the processes at work inside 3i slash Atlas. For planetary scientists, these findings didn't settle the debate about the object's nature, but they did force a rethink. If 3i slash Atlas was just another comet, it was breaking the rules in ways that demanded careful, skeptical attention. On October 2, 2025, as 3i slash Atlas swept past Mars, NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter turned its high-resolution camera toward the interstellar object. The hope was simple. Capture the clearest images ever taken of a visitor from beyond the sun's reach. But as the days ticked by, the promised images never appeared. NASA's Public Affairs Office cited routine review procedures, a data backlog, and the timing of a partial government shutdown as reasons for the delay. The official line was that all data must be vetted for planetary protection and mission integrity before release. That explanation satisfied few people. Astronomers who had been tracking 3 Atlas from Earth pressed for even a single frame. On social media, speculation ran wild. Some accused NASA of dragging its feet, while others wondered aloud if the images revealed something unexpected. Avi Loeb, never shy about institutional caution, questioned whether the delay was simply bureaucratic or a sign that the images were under classified review. The Mars flyby was the closest any spacecraft had ever come to an interstellar object. With no public images, the data gap became a flashpoint for frustration and suspicion. Scientists pointed out that previous Mars reconnaissance orbiter images of comets and asteroids were released within days, not weeks. Watchdog groups filed Freedom of Information Act requests, demanding transparency. As perihelion approached and 3i slash Atlas prepared to slip behind the sun, the absence of visual evidence left the world's best look at the object locked behind closed doors. For planetary defense advocates, the episode exposed how information bottlenecks can slow critical analysis just when clarity is needed most. October 29, 2025. The clock ticks toward perihelion, the moment 3i slash Atlas draws closest to the sun. For hours, the object will vanish behind a wall of solar glare, completely invisible from Earth. No telescope on the ground can track it. At this point in its orbit, 3i slash Atlas is moving at peak velocity, over 58 kilometers per second, hurtling through space faster than any planet. The geometry is unforgiving. Sun, Comet, and Earth line up almost perfectly, creating a natural blind spot that even the most advanced observatories can't pierce. This is not just a curiosity of orbital mechanics. In the world of spaceflight, this window is the prime opportunity for a maneuver called the Oberth effect. If a spacecraft, or anything with an engine, fires its thrusters at the point of maximum speed near a massive body like the Sun, it gains far more energy than it would elsewhere. 
This principle is well known to engineers plotting interplanetary missions. For 3i slash Atlas, perihelion is the one time when a radical course change could happen, hidden from every eye on Earth. As the object races through its solar slingshot, astronomers and planetary defense teams brace for the unknown. When 3i slash Atlas reappears, its trajectory will tell the story. Did it follow the path predicted by physics, or did something unexpected happen while it was out of sight? The answer will come only after the blind spot closes and the world waits for the first post-perihelion data. Avi Loeb has spent years urging the scientific community to take rare, high-impact risks seriously. When it comes to 3i slash Atlas, he doesn't claim to know if it's natural or engineered. Instead, he frames the situation with a concept borrowed from economics, the black swan event. In his words, a black swan event may be rare, but its consequences are so large they can't be shrugged off if ignored. For Loeb, the real danger isn't the odds, it's the cost of being wrong. He points out that if 3i slash Atlas reappears from behind the sun on a new heading, the question is no longer academic. That outcome could upend assumptions not just in astronomy, but in policy and finance. The scale of the object, measured in kilometers, not meters, only sharpens his argument. Loeb puts his own estimate on the table, a 4 out of 10 on the scale between natural and technological. In his view, that means probably natural, but strange enough that active global monitoring is warranted. The lesson, he argues, is not to panic, but to prepare. Unlikely events with world-changing consequences demand vigilance, not dismissal. For Loeb, the responsible move is to watch every step, keep contingency plans ready, and treat uncertainty with respect. Three key checkpoints now define the global watch on 3 barasai slash Atla. First comes the moment of truth after perihelion. In early December 2025, astronomers will search for the object as it reappears from behind the sun. Ephemeris projections show it should emerge into view at about 1.8 astronomical units from Earth, roughly 270 million kilometers out. This reappearance is more than routine. If 3i slash Atlas is found where orbital models predict, confidence in its natural status grows. But even a small deviation could set off urgent reviews by planetary defense teams. The next milestone arrives December 19, 2025. On that date, 3i slash Atlas makes its closest approach to Earth, still at a safe distance, but ideally positioned for intensive observation. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory, Hubble, and other major facilities are scheduled to capture data looking for unexpected motion, radio signals, or optical flashes. This window is the best opportunity to catch signs of controlled movement or detect any anomaly that might challenge natural explanations. The third checkpoint comes in March 2026, as 3i Atlas passes near Jupiter. Current models predict a flyby at about 0.78 astronomical units from the giant planet. While not a close call by planetary standards, this encounter lets scientists test for gravitational deflection and monitor for any trajectory change. Each of these dates serves as a concrete milestone, clear, measurable moments when the world will know if 3i slash Atlas continues to play by the rules of nature or if something new is at work. If an advanced civilization set its sights on our solar system, Jupiter would be the logical beachhead. Ganymede, Jupiter's largest moon, offers a compelling combination of scale and resources. With a diameter of 5,268 kilometers, it's even bigger than Mercury. Its surface gravity is just 14% of Earth's, making it easy to land and launch heavy equipment. Beneath a thick shell of water ice, up to 200 kilometers deep, lies a subsurface ocean holding more water than all of Earth's seas combined. That water can be split into hydrogen and oxygen, providing both fuel and the building blocks for life support. Ganymede is also unique among moons. It has its own magnetic field, offering a measure of protection from Jupiter's intense radiation belts. But the strategic value of Jupiter's system doesn't end there. Locked in the planet's orbit are the Trojan asteroids, tens of thousands of bodies clustered at stable points ahead of and behind Jupiter. These swarms contain a mix of carbon-rich, silicate, and metallic objects, with billions of tons of iron and nickel scattered among them. 
While no Trojan has been sampled directly, spectral surveys and upcoming missions like Lucy suggest a diverse bounty of raw materials. For any actors seeking a long-term industrial foothold, these asteroids represent a ready-made supply chain for metals and organics, all in microgravity and beyond the reach of terrestrial politics. From a strategic perspective, establishing operations on Ganymede or among the Trojans would provide access to propellant, metals, and a stable platform for expansion, outward to Saturn, inward to Mars, or wherever opportunity arises. In planetary science circles, this isn't just idle speculation. It's a scenario grounded in the cold logic of resource availability and orbital mechanics. The question isn't whether Jupiter's system is valuable, it's why, if you could choose anywhere, you'd choose to start there. The next chapter in planetary defense is unfolding at the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, perched atop Cerro Pachon in Chile. When full operations begin, Rubin's sweeping surveys will scan the entire visible sky every few nights. Simulations predict a new interstellar object could be flagged every few months to a year, an order of magnitude leap from the era when spotting even one in a decade seemed remarkable. That means the age of rare cosmic visitors is ending. Soon, interstellar objects will be routine blips in the data stream, not once-in-a-lifetime anomalies. Yet the policies and protocols built to protect Earth have not kept pace. Current planetary defense systems were designed to track asteroids with a chance of hitting the planet, objects that fit a narrow threat model and trigger established response plans. But 3i Atlas is a wake-up call. Not all risks come from direct impact. There is no global framework for rapid investigation of an interstellar object that behaves oddly, or for coordinated action if evidence hints at something artificial, even when there's no collision threat. There are no formal guidelines for what to do when an object's behavior can't be explained, or when the consequences of a black swan event extend far beyond the physical. Avi Loeb argues that this blind spot is no longer acceptable. He calls for a new infrastructure, one that can monitor, analyze, and respond to the unknown. With Rubin's cadence set to reveal a steady stream of interstellar visitors, the time for improvisation is over. The next anomaly may not wait for bureaucracy to catch up. For Loeb, the final lesson of 3i Atlas is clear. Humanity must treat the unknown not as a curiosity, but as a mandate for action. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter reportedly captured high-resolution images during the object's October 2nd flyby, but those images remain unreleased, officially due to data processing delays. As 3i slash Atlas approaches perihelion on October 29th, its trajectory and behavior remain under close observation, with scientists watching for any unexpected course change. While most evidence still points to a natural origin, experts like Avi Loeb argue the statistical anomalies and high-impact risks demand vigilance. With the Vera C. Rubin Observatory expected to find new interstellar objects every few months, the need for dedicated monitoring and policy is clear. Today, the true nature and intentions, if any, behind 3i slash Atlas remain unknown. The facts leave the world watching, waiting, and preparing for answers only future data can bring.